<laughs> we are back. The Premier Pundits are in the house ahead of the blank game week 29. We're not doing an attacking assets podcast this week. We're not even doing a defensive one. No, we're looking towards a free hit. Eight teams, four fixtures. Nothing really appeals. Or does it? My esteemed co-host, my mentor, my on-field husband. <laughs> Screen, field, field. It's Mr. McCann. I mean, there, there is a field behind me, so we'll count that. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's lovely that uh, you have such care for me to, to call you, uh, call me your on-screen husband. And yeah, I mean, this blank game week 29, I think this is one of the worst blank game weeks I've ever seen. And it kind of goes hand in hand with that terrible double game week that you and I both really didn't like. And then it was a terrible one for the community. There was lots of players rested and... It's not a great one. So I think this is a tough game week to kind of navigate, but I've kind of gone through this. As you said there, four fixtures, eight teams. I'm going to go by fixture by fixture and kind of eliminate or look at teams, players that we should be looking at. So I think that was an easier way to address it. Now, first and foremost, who is playing who? So up on screen, you can see Friday night. So make sure to not miss the deadline there. Friday night, 8 p.m., We've got Fulham versus Leeds. So 6.30 will be the cutoff for you to get your teams ready. It is slightly earlier than usual. So Fulham Leeds, then Saturday, also at 8pm, will be Brighton Newcastle. And then on Sunday, 3 o'clock is West Ham Arsenal. And then later on in the evening is Aston Villa versus Spurs at 7.30. So quite a few interesting teams to look at and I want to start off with a fixture that I think gives me the most certainty and it does involve your boys Newcastle against Brighton so the reason why I've got certainty we have seen this week and you can open out more the pictures of Wilson back in training uh, and things like that but I don't think he'll be back I don't think that Newcastle will have any of their big hitters so the defense of Brighton looks good in this game week We've been talking for a little bit of while. From my perspective, the data of Brighton has been great and the story continues that they've been the second best attack and second best defence over the last six game weeks but failed to deliver. But I feel that this is probably one of the fixtures where you can look at it and go, all right, they probably can deliver because whatever Newcastle throw at them will not be of high quality. Um, looking at their own individual data, Brighton have had an XG of 4.43 against. They've underperformed that and had seven goals conceded. They've only let in 29 shots in the box, only six big chances in those six game weeks, second best in the Premier League. And so it shows you that a team like Newcastle, so looking at their attacking numbers, in terms of it, they sit third from bottom for XG over the last six, and a lot of their attacking numbers are bottom half of the table. So they won't be creating a lot of chances against a Brighton team that do limit their opponent. And so that, that gives me a little bit more confidence than usual. And also, this might be a week, weirdly. I don't know if you're going to come in and say... You're absolutely crazy here, Jason. Might be one to look at a Brighton forward. Their underlying attacking data is always kind of good. Oh, see, this is this has already got alarm bells in his mind. He's thinking there's something wrong with Jason. He's overworking at the moment. He needs some rest. <laughs> He's fatigued. Um, since, you know, game week 23, the Seagulls have the fourth best shots in the box, fifth best XG since then. I know they're not performing on it. But Newcastle's defence, whilst it's not catastrophic, it's not great. And I feel like this might be a chance for one of their assets. So defensively, Sanchez and Dunk, I think, are great. Uh, Sanchez, you know, the goalkeeper, he might get a few save points. He might be given a few long shots by Newcastle just to, to pick that up and get a bonus here and there. Dunk, he has the opportunity to score from set pieces. And the third option, I'm not keen on tripling up on the Brighton defence, just because I know I'll be kicking myself if they do underperform once again. Third option could go to, but maybe not necessarily, could go to maybe Neil Mapai, highest XGI of any player from Brighton this season, sometimes on penalties. Gross, 
also sometimes on spot kicks, on set pieces, fourth highest chances created of any player this season. Then you've got Trossard, who has the second highest XGI of Brighton players. On set pieces, second highest XG of any Brighton player over the last six game weeks. And I've left off Danny Welbeck just because I think the fact that he missed penalties, uh, I don't think he'll be in and around the opportunities that Neil Mapai or somebody like that has. So starting there with the Newcastle-Brighton game, what do you think, have I gone too far with even suggesting a Brighton attacking asset there? This has banana skin on an AC path wearing a pair of roller boots for me. <laughs> um, look, I know what you're saying. I know the data. Um, Brighton will be buoyed by that last weekend result. Great three points down at St Mary's. Newcastle have been atrocious. Um, you cannot deny. But when Newcastle's backs are really against the wall, against are still not convinced by Brighton. Um, you know, there's team news in both camps which could still affect or have an effect on the game. I'll start with Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, you're right with regards to Alan San Maxim and, and Callum Wilson. However, there is some suggestion that Miguel Almiron may return to the squad. He has been training. He is well ahead of, of the others in terms of his recovery. The good thing is it wasn't soft tissue, so it's not an injury, say like a hamstring, where there may be slight concerns of that re-injury recurrence. Um, you know, he's only been out a few weeks, so in terms of his fitness levels, he won't have dipped that much and naturally is a very fit young lad anyway. So there's one potential returner, which would be a bonus for Newcastle given the fact that, you know, we are missing those players already outlined. And secondly, to go to Brighton, um, we've got concerns over Dan Byrne. And, you know, that is hamstring related. And what I would say at this juncture is, you know, we're coming up to an international break. Unless you're 100% certain that that issue is over and done with, you don't take the risk because any risk, particularly for, for Graham Potter and this season running, you know, that could put him out for all of those remaining games as opposed to just taking a, a step back. I think it was Zakiri who came into the side at half time last weekend. You know, predominantly he's he's seen as a, a striker or certainly a forward playing role, but performed well. And Graham Potter said, you know, he may be an option to go in there. Um it will require a little bit of a reshuffle, maybe Veltman dropping in, and um, you know. So for that reason, I do quite like the defensive aspect of, of Brighton. Um, I think Sanchez will be boosted by the call up to the to the Spain squad, so he's going to be brimming with confidence. And for me, it's got nil nil written all over it. Uh, I really do. I just think, like I say, I'm not convinced with either side attacking and nil nil you know would probably benefit Brighton a little bit more but Newcastle would probably take a point now if the truth be known from the AMX I think Steve Bruce would be happy with that and this is the interesting thing it's why I prefaced it with you know it's, it's a bit punty it is one of those game weeks though so at the moment the, the advice I'm giving is because I'm playing a free hit I'm assuming you are as well Ben so all this kind of stuff is based on a team that is free hitting or if you've moved around your players you might have uh, an 11 to play or 9 or 10 but realistically a lot of these players I wouldn't want past this game week you know that there there's not a lot of amazing, amazing options. And so with Brighton, because of their intermittency, I would only stick with Sanchez and Dunk for like this game week, but not going ahead. So I do I do hear you. I think the probability will be it might be a naught naught. And so um, in my own team, which we will come to right at the end, I don't actually have any Brighton attacking people. I've got Dunk and Sanchez in mind. Let's quickly go to the Fulham and Leeds game because I think this one is super tough to call. Fulham have looked defensively strong recently. 
much improved side and they were a top four defensive side before the Man City match but still have pretty good numbers and are sitting seventh for overall XG conceded over the last six game weeks. But what is interesting to me is also Leeds have a similar XG conceded over that same amount of time. Over the last six, Fulham have actually looked slightly better than Leeds going forward in terms of XG. But then in terms of chances created, shots in the box and big chances created, Leeds are better than the Cottagers. So it's, it's kind of swings and roundabouts here. You can see my point that they're quite equally matched up. And, and this is the, the toughness of this game week. But I feel, and this is what I've done with my team as well, is both of these teams are probably going to put two sails to the wind. They're going to really go for this match. Leeds, they're, they're always attacking. Fulham need to kind of win this game. And so my eye is on both of the teams attacking assets rather than defensive ones. I'm looking at Lookman, big main man for Fulham this season, but also Marja because of his 3.35 XG over the last six game weeks. And we know that Leeds are leaky in defence. So this could be a good opportunity for both of them to get on the score sheet or assist and be involved in the goal somehow. And then looking at Leeds, Rafina, fourth best XGI of any player over the last six. And also Patrick Bamford has to be thrown in there. I know he's like a swear word to you, but looking at him, the fact that he's pretty much declared fit, unless you, you kind of know a bit more uh, about that, Ben. But I think those are, I'm looking at possibly four assets from that game, but no defensive ones because I can see there being a few goals between these sides. Do you think that's a fair assessment there, Ben? Um, oh, it's difficult. I mean, I do, I do like Maya, or Maja, um, but I'm just looking at Fulham. Am I right in thinking they've only scored two in their last five? Is that right? I mean, up until the, the Manchester City defeat, that was the anomaly in recent performances because Fulham have been really tight. Um, you know, they've been um, really promising and, and they give their players hope of getting out of that drop zone. You know, they're on the court heels of Newcastle now, um, but still are still struggling to convert. And I'm not sure that the, um, again, inherently we, 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 we've been looked at Leeds this season and we've, we've expected goals in the game, whether it's from their attacking assets or, Conversely, from the other, you know, the opposite end, where they haven't really been able to defend very well, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm thinking this is a pretty tight one as well. I, I'm thinking a one goal, a one goal either way. Um, if it falls to to Fulham, they're gonna be fighting tooth and nail to hold on to that. Leeds, yes, uh, you know they're safe now. Um, you know, Bielsa will pick up points here and there between now and the end of the season. Uh, Patrick Bamford, yeah, he is more or less there. It's an impact injury. It's on his hip. It's about pain management. So I fully expect him to be involved. Uh, the concern would be if he took another whack on it. And again, like I say, not necessarily something that will affect him long term, but it may just hamper him a little bit and it may just be in the back of his mind. Uh, and I'm looking at where else are, are the goals coming from, from maybe in that, that Leeds team. Rafina would, would be my core as always, uh, I wouldn't mind a punt maybe on on a Fulham defensive facet. I'm 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 just not sold on the attacking. I just it's I re honestly, mate. I, I think it's a, it is a it's a hard one. It is a it's a tough game to call. And if Fulham get that goal, they will you know they will look to close shop and they will look to kill the game. I've, I expect them to probably, you know, go with a four-two-three-one, uh, maybe with Lamina uh, and Guisa and, and Harrison Reed. You know, if they went to goal up, I can see Scotty Parker bringing on, you know, having all three, and just, you know, asking Leeds to sort of break them down. And, um, you know, the way they've been defending Man City aside, you know, I think they could hold on for that sort of three points. So I'm going to go one-nil Fulham in that game. And so would that mean that you'd have Marja or would you have Lookman? <laughs> the million dollar question. I mean, did, whilst you decide that, I would say 
If you like Fulham defensive assets, then Tosin Adebayo is a great shout, 4.5. And this is the problem with the, with this fixture or any of these fixtures, is you kind of have to back one team or the other, unless you think both teams are going to score like I do. So, yeah, I mean, is it Marja? Is it Lookman? Which one is getting the look in? Um, I've been burnt on both players and different formats over the last sort of four to five weeks, picking the wrong player at the wrong time. Uh, I, I like them both. Oh, you know what? I think the time to deliver and stand up is Ruben Loftus cheek. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was going to say, let's flip a coin and whichever one, because it seemed that close to you. But Ruben Loftus cheek, I like it. I mean, it's a great shout. He has been involved, and this might be his time to shine. Let's move on to the West Ham Arsenal game then. Another tight one. I think these are all tight, apart from possibly the Spurs Villa one, where I'm definitely backing the Lily Whites. But over the course of the season, West Ham have been a top five defence. Relatively good attack as well. And in the recent games, that there has been a little bit of regression in the Hammers' attack. But they have played tough opponents. Then you look at the defence of Arsenal. And it's been quite good this season. Uh, they, they both kind of got their defence units together. But Arsenal too have struggled with goals. They're both kind of coming into this. Looking at their numbers. Again, very close together. Arsenal sit third. And West Ham fourth best for XG conceded over the last six game weeks but what I would say is my backing is more behind the hammers because they've been matching those expected numbers whereas Arsenal even though they actually sit high in terms of XG conceded have no clean sheets in the last six the hammers have three so looking at that then factoring in that Arsenal have this European game on tomorrow so we're recording this Wednesday, so it'll be uh, Thursday. Um, they might be resting a few players. Obviously, there is the international break coming up, but realistically, they'll be looking after some of those players. Some might not be coming on. Some might be given uh, taken off early. So we don't even know if some of those players will see out the match or, or start the match. So looking at it, I think West Ham are the more secure to own. But I also think that they're more in form. And so Fabianski, good to own. Cresswell, Kufal, Dawson, they're all equally good. I think Dawson's a good goal threat, but Kufal is creative. Lingard is tempting okay. due to... Uh... <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, lost myself there. Um, Lingard is tempting due to his spot kicks. Antonio can pick apart anybody on his day, but I can see this one being a 0 as well, Ben. But I would stick towards the West Ham assets just because you know that they're going to start. So, I mean, would you back that? Are you going with West Ham and Arsenal assets or just with the Hammers? Um, yeah, I think I concur there. I, I'm just not sure at this point how Mikel Arteta will, will want to line up. He will obviously look at last weekend's North London derby win over Tottenham. Um Obviously, uh, you know, Lacazette led that line. We have concerns with regards to Saka at this moment in time. You know, if Saka's past fit and he wants to start Lacazette, who scored in that, in that derby, then where does Aubameyang go? If Aubameyang comes in, does he take the place of Emile Smith-Rowe? Does he, you know, if Odegaard was to start on Thursday, does that mean Smith-Rowe would start on Sunday if he... So there's too there's too much going on in there for me um, to try and sort of second guess. I just I, I can't yeah I couldn't nail down that that start eleven with any real confidence. And for me, the West Ham were a little bit unlucky at, at Old Trafford, Manchester United. I do like Jess Lingard since his arrival at the club, so he will return to that start eleven without a shadow of a doubt. He was ineligible um, against his parent club. And Antonio, you know, I, I own Antonio, so he hasn't really delivered in the in the couple of weeks that I've owned him. So, uh, you know, what a game for him to to repay my faith. So I think it will be Lingard and Antonio. Um, I'm not so I'm not so bothered about those defensive assets. Cresswell maybe would be the obvious shout with that, but I'm not too keen because I'm always like I say, derby games are a, a little bit where the form book and 
you know, can go out the window and mistakes can happen in that sort of that pressure cooker environment of, of, of it being a big game, albeit without a crowd. Yeah, I think the crowd is a big difference this season. We might have seen a few more fireworks in the North London derby or things like that. Although, to be fair, with Lamella there, he's he's a tinderbox right next to a firework factory waiting to go off. So, um, in terms of it, we'll get on to my team. So, we'll go to the Aston Villa versus Spurs game. And for me, you know, looking at the numbers, you'd assume 13 goals in their last six versus four goals in their last six looking at where these teams have been this season, looking at the narratives, you'd expect the 13 goals to be with Aston Villa and the four to be with Spurs. But it's the reverse. Spurs have been doing quite well going forward. Villa have not been great since the COVID outbreak in their camp. Defensively, they've done really well because of Martinez. They should have conceded more and other teams haven't put these chances away. Also, offensively, the villains shouldn't pose too much worry to the Lily Whites. They're, they're not scoring much. Four goals in their last six matches, not really good. They're sitting bottom half of the table for XG over the last six. It's not great stuff for them, attack or defence. If Son is fit, I think he's a great shout. Uh, Kane, 100% in there. If Son is not fit, I'll go with Bale. And also Region is in my pick. So, at the moment, because of the fitness kind of worries, it is Kane, Bale and Region in my team. So, yeah, kind of summarising that game, are you going for a Tottenham treble up or do you think the Aston Villa asset should have a shout as well, Ben? With Martinez in goal, you know, those defensive assets do hold a little bit of appeal. But, yeah, for me, I, I'm going to... S- Put it out there that I don't think Sun recovers despite what's been reported and maybe what Jose Mourinho said. So I'm going to say there's no chance with that. Just given the mechanism of injury, people will re- reference that hamstring injury early on in the season where um, Son was taken off at half time. Jose Mourinho said it was bad. Next week he starts. Um, that was more of a muscular complaint, discomfort flagged during the break. Whereas this one, you know, he was sprinting, he pulled up, and that in itself inherently suggests and indicate that it's a lot more serious. Um, not serious enough to keep him out long term. I would expect him to be back game week 30, which I believe is Newcastle, uh, as long as he doesn't play for South Korea. But like I say, if he misses his club game, he's obviously out of the Europa game. I wouldn't expect him to be involved. Hard to look past Harry Kane, given the form that he's been in. He was, um, you know, slightly unfortunate not to get the equaliser against Arsenal last weekend. Um, you know, but for 95% of the game, done absolutely nothing. So, you know, when Aston Villa are giving up, you know, big chances um, and XG conceded, you know, I don't think Harry Kane will let them off lately. So for me, uh, I will be looking at Harry Kane and I will look at that Europa League team on Thursday for hopefully a little bit of insight into how Jose might line up. He could go with the, the three and behind, which might be Lucas Moura, um, Stephen Bergwijn and uh, Le, not Lamella because he's suspended in Bale. So, uh, yeah. Probably two of those. I think I'd double up on Tottenham and, and maybe consider Reguilón would be me pick as well from that Tottenham back line. So just the end, looking at my team, I'll put it up on screen a little bit early and we normally don't do this because you and I do our transfers quite late. But I played the free hit already um, and also from the fact that you know it is a free hit so I can do these transfers whenever and it, it doesn't really affect my team too much. It is just for this one game week. And we will be waiting on the news, as you said there, of the Europa League fixtures just to see with teams and team news. So going through it, my goalkeeper is Sanchez. I then got Region, Dunk, Creswell. And then in the midfield, Lingard, Rafina, Bale, Lookman. And up front, I have got Bamford, Marja and Harry Kane. And Kane is my captain for this game week. So I think... You know, like I said there, I would prefer Son in my team, but realistically, I don't think he'll be playing either. So I've kind of almost given myself protection. Bale is 
what I feel is the, the best midfielder out of those bunch left at Spurs. The annoying thing with him is he'll probably play 60 to 70 minutes max. And so he's kind of got a cap on his abilities. And I just got hope, fingers crossed, that he does those things that he should do and can do in those minutes that he does have on the pitch. So any final comments on my team there, Ben? Or are you ready to just wish everybody luck going into game week 29? Looks solid, mate. Looks solid. I mean, obviously, team news pending because we're recording early. I will be pulling the free hit chip trigger. Uh, as it stands, I think I have three players involved. But it was something I never planned for because that was always going to be the case. Um, but indeed, yeah, look, good luck to you. Good luck to everybody watching and following. And thanks for subscribing. Uh, look, if we get this right, what we do know is there's a potential to see a big green arrow. So we could all benefit from that, I'm sure. Anyway, the finger man taking my mantle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so for this week, um, that's a wrap. And keep following, keep tuning, keep listening and following our social media channels. We will have more content coming out even during the FPL break. But for now, bye-bye.